FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and the date is June 9th, 2017, and it's time for another Triple Lutz Report. This is episode 417. And by the way, uh, didn't celebrate it officially, but the anniversary of the show, the sixth anniversary was June 7th, 2017. I started doing this full time in 2011. And I just want to say thanks to all of you out there, all of you who've who've stuck with me f- throughout the years, you trolls out there. Thank you for that. I I really appreciate your being with us. I appreciate your your interest and keep the emails coming. The email address KL at kerrylutz.com kl at kerrylutz.com by the way if you missed the round table from the other night we had a gentleman the uh, vp of business development from ssri that's silver standards resources they're in the process of renaming the company at some point because now they they produce a lot more gold than silver uh, johnny was on with us campbell mccrary from om partners we had Andy Schechtman from Miles Franklin talking about bullion and about their offshore storage. And we also had myself talking about Bitcoin and a potential bust coming up, which is a really good opportunity for me to segue into this. I mean, what can you say about Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum and Litecoin? They've gone parabolic or exponential. And if you listen to the experts, they're heading to the moon. And you just have to look at the charts to know that you've heard this story before. It always happens. And of course, this time is different. Bitcoin, you know, is the people's currency. It's free of country, free of central banks. What could possibly go wrong? And there's an underlying premise that countries and their central banks are powerless to stop Bitcoin and cryptos from becoming the dominant forms of currency throughout the world. I mean, after all, if it's what the people want, the people will have it, right? But in the long run, perhaps they can't stop them, but they sure can make the road a very bumpy one and raise a lot of questions, put up a lot of roadblocks along the way. And go back to 2011, gold was making all-time highs, as was silver, was just the natural, unmanipulated result of people losing faith in their government fiat currency around the world. But what happened? And when a market goes parabolic, it will eventually crash. You can't know when, you can't know how long it's going to take, but crash it will, just like gold and silver did. And to date, neither of them has gotten close to their pre-prior crash highs. And... Hopefully, we're at a point now where they're going to. I believe they will eventually come back and come back big. No question about it. But so far, it hasn't been the case. And watching this unfold firsthand, one lesson that I take away from it is that one should get out while the getting is good or at least take some profits. I mean, if you're up 12, 13 times on Bitcoin... What if you sold half your position or a third of it? You'd be so far ahead, it's worth doing. All right. When a market goes parabolic, it's eventually going to crash. That's all it comes down to. So, uh, hey, take take your profit and then whatever you have left is what you call a free ride or a free trade. And if it goes up to 100,000 and you've got 10 bitcoins instead of 30 so you'll have a million dollars instead of 3 million or if you took 15 for profit at, at its present time uh, what's 15 times uh, times 2000 times 3000 it's $40,000 roughly your value now so you will have 
1.9 million instead of 3 million. Greed is what's going to kill you. And I think to better understand what's happening, we need to understand what money really is. There's seven basic elements of money. Number one, store of value. Number two, portability. I can move it around. I can go to a store or I can go to a, a peddler on the street, pull out some of my fiat currency. He takes it. Divisibility, easily divided. I give you a $100 bill for a $50 I give you a hundred dollar note for a fifty dollar bill at a restaurant, and you give me back fifty dollars. Medium of exchange. All right, really, really important one, and that is that that it's accepted universally or near universally. Durability means it can't be destroyed. Paper currency. Well, we'll get into that later. Number six, rarity, and number seven, uniformity. So let's compare the dollar to Bitcoin. Is the dollar a store of value? Well, currently the answer is resoundingly yes. Before 1971, when the greenback was actually backed by gold and was as good as gold, the answer was a resounding yes. Now its value rests upon two major things. The government's mandate that it is legal tender for all debts, both public and private, and the public slash world's confidence in it as a medium of exchange. If that confidence were to disappear, so would its value. So its value is directly based upon its its, uh, confidence, the acceptance of the public as a medium of exchange and a store of value. You see what happens in countries like Venezuela. It's still a medium of exchange there, their local um, peso, whatever they're using, real, I don't remember. But what's happened is it's still a medium of exchange, but the confidence is gone as far as it being a store of value, and then it's losing its value monumentally fast. And so... So those things are important. Uh, you know, obviously, the, uh, the dollar has got portability, divisibility, durability, rarity, and uniformity. All dollars are created equal. They are portable and divisible into cents, etc. They're relatively rare. They don't grow on trees yet. Paper dollars are somewhat durable. Digital dollars are subject to network risk. So now let's take a look at Bitcoin. So far, they're a store of value because the confidence is there and building. They have limited use as a medium of exchange, but that too is growing as its popularity and acceptance increases. It is portable, divisible, durable, rare, and uniform as long as you have access to a computer, tablet, or smartphone. If we had a global computer failure, there wouldn't be much durability. Of course, the people will tell you, you can always print them out, but you still need a computer to effectuate a transaction. Central banks and governments have a number of ways to combat, combat the inevitable transition to cryptocurrencies that aren't in their control. They can get governments to ban them as a medium of exchange. They can crack down on domestic exchanges the way that China has done. Internationally, governments can enact treaties and unify against these threatening currencies. Governments, central banks can create their own cryptos, of course. And finally, they can engage can engage in psyops, which is military speak for psychological operations to undermine the public's confidence in the security and value of these newly found currency units. And that, I submit to you, is what's happening right now. If we accept that the precious metal markets have been subject to widespread manipulation from the early 2000s to current day, we have a framework to understand how the cryptocurrency PSYOP will be executed. Remember when gold hit its all-time high of $1,921.50? That was an intraday high, not a daily or weekly. Shortly thereafter, it began its long-term decline, arguably as a result of manipulation. So the powers that be manipulated them up and then crashed them. When they realized they couldn't stop gold and silver from going up anymore, 
They joined the bandwagon and pushed it up to a technically vulnerable point, and then the big sell-off occurred. Look, if you accept and if you believe that gold can be manipulated down, then you have to believe that gold can be manipulated up as well. It's pure axiomatic. If you can manipulate it going down, you can manipulate it going up as well. So that's that's what we're having here, I believe, these psyops. And the net result is that most of the globe doesn't believe that precious metals are a store of value and an insurance policy against the possibility of the downfall of fiat currency because the volatility of gold and its loss of value in terms of fiat currencies in the U.S. primarily, but around the world it did occur. I accept that because the dollar has gone up so much that gold in other currencies like euros and yuan and rubles has gone to near record highs or record highs. But in the dollar, it's nowhere near its record high. So I think this is what's going to occur here. Uh, You know, the argument is that the very same thing is happening or about to happen with the cryptos. First, understand that the crypto coin market is a market. It's driven by the forces of supply and demand. And I might also add fear and greed. Wherever there is a market, it is subject to the possibility of manipulation. Whether or not it will be manipulated is another question. Are the powers that be currently pushing cryptos ever higher in a parabolic wave that will inevitably lead to a major, major crash? Do they have the resources and the ability to dramatically drive up the price of cryptos and of course they do and this will help them set back the cause of cryptocurrencies and lead to wide-scale rejection of them they hope by the unknowing world populations as an alternative currency they will still be in use they won't disappear they are going to gain popularity over time however confidence and confidence is really the key will be set back and will be hindered It'll hinder worldwide adoption and use. When the peak when the peak comes, when will the peak come and how high will it go? And no one can predict this, only that the higher and faster it goes, the faster and more violent it will crash when that fateful day arrives. A word about initial coin offerings, ICOs. Companies are issuing their own cryptocurrencies currencies and they're raising millions of dollars outside the SEC required filings. And to an, to this untrained retired attorney, this a clearly appears to be wholesale violation of federal and state security laws. Calling something a currency doesn't automatically exempt it as a security. However, the powers that be will allow this to continue and even encourage it by silence from the regulatory bodies. But once the inevitable crypto crash occurs, once it happens, They will come down on these offerings like a ton of bricks, an action that will further crash the cryptos. The only way cryptos won't crash is if this time is really different. That would mean that there's a systemic financial crash on the horizon, far worse than 0809, that decimates all fiat currencies and leaves only cryptos standing. Perhaps, you know, this might be inevitable and it might be just around the corner, But then again, maybe it's not inevitable, or at the very least, a long ways off in the future. We don't know the future. And this is by no means a condemnation or a suggestion not to learn about cryptocurrencies and even to buy them. It's more an admonition that this time will turn out to be no different than all the others. Hyperbolic markets always crash. And I should say exponential because hyperbolic is the other side of the rise. It's a parable, parable shape. So it goes up and it comes down. Remember, you can never lose money taking a profit. Don't get greedy, but always buy insurance. And that's my advice to you. It's so important that we learn the lessons of the past, 
But if this time is indeed difference, if this time is indeed different than all the others, uh, doesn't hurt to have some Bitcoin. The others, I just don't see the acceptance of them. They're, I don't know of stores of overstock.com or Apple or anyone else accepting Ethereum or Litecoin, but uh, but maybe they'll gain acceptance. I'm not sure. I only think there's one for there's room for one cryptocurrency. My honest opinion. All the others will be derivatives of Bitcoin, one way or the other. And that's it for this story. Hey, more questions, comments, KL at KerryLutz.com, KL at KerryLutz.com. Hey, so Obamacare. Disaster, rising premiums, lower, uh, you know, higher deductibles, higher copays, all that great stuff. New York, it's one place where uh, it was a success somewhat because the cost of health insurance was already so high. The health insurers have requested a 47% increase for Obamacare policies for next year. The average proposed increase for individual policies for 18 is 16.6%. That's what the state said. But some consumers are going to get whacked with much higher, higher increases. There's one called Health Now New York, 47%. United Healthcare, 38%. CareConnect, 30%. Emblem, Health Hip. You can just imagine 25 percent. It goes on and on and on. Uh, you can't ignore fundamental economic principles and expect that everything is going to turn out fine. It doesn't work that way. It never has. It never will. So we got Comey today. He's uh, testifying before the Congress, uh, before the Senate hearing. And he says that Trump is a liar, a liar, a liar, pants on fire. Uh, I totally do not trust this guy. Uh, he's been a fixer for the Clintons since Bill Clinton sold a pardon to Mark Rich. Purportedly sold one, allegedly, whatever you want to say. Doesn't matter. He's upset because the administration chose to defame me and, more importantly, the FBI by saying that the organization was in disarray, that it was poorly led, that the workforce had lost confidence in its leader. Those were lies, plain and simple, Comey said. And, look, uh, the guy was ethically challenged. It's very reasonable for president to request loyalty from those who serve in his administration. And if the guy says, I can't be loyal to you, or I will be loyal to you while upholding the law, fine. You can't ask for any more than that. Comey admitted Trump never asked him to drop the federal probe, but said he interpreted the president's request in which he said he hoped Comey would drop the matter to mean that's what Trump wanted. Uh, he took it as a direction, but he didn't report it to the Justice Department. He didn't do anything. And why does the guy take such copious notes when he has a, has a meeting with Trump, but in three hours of Hillary's interrogation, no notes were taken? He never took notes when he met with Obama. I mean, the guy is what he is. And you know that you just have to, you just have to look at him and you know the FBI is not a distinguished law enforcement organization. How could anyone think this? I mean, you had J. Edgar Hoover. He basically had a file on everybody. I mean, really evil, venal guy. He was anti-communist, so that makes him a good thing. My old uh, home city of New York, they're having the Puerto Rican Day Parade. They want to honor this guy, a convicted terrorist, Oscar Lopez Rivera. This has led to all sorts of companies pulling out, people pulling out of it. You know, it's a joke. It's a joke. Really, really a joke. But so much of this stuff is. <laughs> Anyways, New York City has become one joke. Uh, <laughs> the Lower East Side Hell Square is now an alarming hotbed for crime, uh, rapes, you name it. Everything is out of control in the city. I will be shocked if de Blasio actually gets reelected, but uh, stranger things have happened here, right? 
Stranger things have happened and continue to happen. So just getting back to the Trump investigations, the the ridiculousness, the, the crazy snowflake lefties believe that he's actually going to be impeached. This is never going to happen. It, it's an impossibility. It's just ridiculous. And to think that it could happen is, is just an act of, of total illogic, of madness. It's just not going to. The powers that be hate his guts. There's no question about that. And they will hate him forever and do everything they can to undermine him. But the fact is, impeachment, I just can't see it happening. I will be shocked if if anything near that comes. Uh, whether it's going to matter or not, whether it matters who's president, I'm not sure. I've always said that Trump isn't going to be judged by the policies he tries to effectuate and by by his his programs it's just not going to be the way his his administration is judged there are so many black swans so many black swans circling circling the carcass of the united states and the world economic system i just don't see what's what's going to stop it something is going to give when it does give it's going to be a disaster and trump will be there leading the charge against it embracing it i don't know what exactly he's going to do but that is how his administration it was going to be judged mark my words anyways questions comments email me kl at kerrylutz.com our twitter feed is at Kerry lutz and uh, our facebook page is financial survival network by the way feel free to subscribe to the show it's a real simple procedure to do it if you got the itunes program on your system now all you got to do is go to the itunes store type in kerry lutz and type in financial survival network either one of those and then click the button that says subscribe and it's it's that easy so uh hey been great here it's been a great seven years oh i'm sorry a great six years it's been a great six years i've loved every minute of it i'm going to love the next six years even more it's a lot of fun so keep listening and subscribe if you haven't already that's it for today this has been another triple let's report carrie lutz signing out FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and the date is June 9th, 2017. And it's time for another Triple Lutz Report. This is episode 417. And by the way, uh, didn't celebrate it officially, but the anniversary of the show, the sixth anniversary was June 7th, 2017. I started doing this full time in 2011. And I just want to say thanks to all of you out there, all of you who've who've stuck with me f throughout the years, you trolls out there. Thank you for that. I, I really appreciate your being with us. I appreciate your, your interest and keep the emails coming. The email address KL at Kerry Lutz.com KL at Kerry Lutz.com. By the way, if you missed the round table from the other night, we had uh, Gentlemen, the uh, VP of Business Development from SSRI, that's Silver Standards Resources. They're in the process of renaming the company at some point. 
because now they they produce a lot more gold than silver. Uh, Johnny was on with us, Campbell McCrary from OM Partners. But what's happened is it's still a medium of exchange, but the confidence is gone as far as it being a store of value, and then it's losing its value monumentally fast. And so so those things are important. Uh, you know, obviously, the, uh, the dollar has got portability, divisibility, durability, rarity, and uniformity. All dollars are created equal. They are portable and divisible into cents, etc. They're relatively rare. They don't grow on trees yet. Paper dollars are somewhat durable. Digital dollars are subject to network risk. So now let's take a look at Bitcoin. So far, they're a store of value because the confidence is there in building. They have limited use as a medium of exchange, but that too is growing as its popularity and acceptance increases. It is portable, divisible, durable, rare, and uniform as long as you have access to a computer, tablet, or smartphone. If we had a global computer failure, there wouldn't be much durability. Of course, the people will tell you, you can always print them out, but you still need a computer to effectuate a transaction. Central banks and governments have a number of ways to combat, combat the inevitable transition to cryptocurrencies that aren't in their control. They can get governments to ban them as a medium of exchange. They can crack down on domestic exchanges the way that China has done. Internationally, governments can enact treaties and unify it. And to date, neither of them has gotten close to their pre-prior crash highs. And hopefully we're at a point now where they're going to. I believe they will eventually come back and come back big. No question about it. But... So far, it hasn't been the case. And watching this unfold firsthand, one lesson that I take away from it is that one should get out while the getting is good or at least take some profits. I mean, if you're up 12, 13 times on Bitcoin, what if you sold half your position or a third of it? You'd be so far ahead, it's worth doing. All right. When a market goes parabolic, it's eventually going to crash. That's all it comes down to. So, uh, hey, take take your profit, and then whatever you have left is what you call a free ride or a free trade. And if it goes up to a hundred thousand, and you've got ten bitcoins instead of thirty, so you'll have a million dollars instead of three million. Or if you took fifteen for profit at, at its present time. Uh, what's 15 times uh, times 2,000 times 3,000? It's $40,000 roughly, your value now. So you will have 1.9 million instead of 3 million. Greed is what's going to kill you. And I think to better understand what's happening, we need to understand what money really is. There's seven basic elements of money. Number one, store of value. Number two, portability. I can move it around. I can go to a store. We had Andy Schechtman from Miles Franklin talking about bullion and about their offshore storage. And we also had myself talking about Bitcoin and a potential bust coming up, which is a really good opportunity for me to segue into this. I mean, what can you say about Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum and Litecoin? Uh, they've gone parabolic or exponential. And if you listen to the experts, they're heading to the moon. And you just have to look at the charts to know that you've heard this story before. It always happens. And of course, this time is different. Bitcoin, you know, is the people's currency. It's free of country, free of central banks. What could possibly go wrong? And there's an underlying premise that countries and their central banks are powerless to stop Bitcoin and cryptos from becoming the dominant forms of currency throughout the world. I mean, after all, if it's what the people want, the people will have it, right? But in the long run, perhaps they can't stop them, but they sure can make the road a very bumpy one and raise a lot of questions.
put up a lot of roadblocks along the way. And go back to 2011, gold was making all-time highs, as was silver. It was just the natural, unmanipulated result of people losing faith in their government fiat currency around the world. But what happened? And when a market goes parabolic, it will eventually crash. You can't know when, you can't know how long it's going to take, but crash it will, just like gold and silver. Or or I can go to a, a peddler on the street, pull out some of my fiat currency, he takes it. Divisibility, easily divided. I give you a $100 bill for a $50, I give you a $100 note for a $50 bill at a restaurant, and you give me back $50. Medium of exchange, all right? Really, really important one. And that is that that it's accepted universally or near universally. Durability means it can't be destroyed. Paper currency, well, we'll get into that later. Number six, rarity. And number seven, uniformity. So let's compare the dollar to Bitcoin. Is the dollar a store of value? Well, currently the answer is resoundingly yes. Before 1971, when the greenback was actually backed by gold and was as good as gold, the answer was a resounding yes. Now its value rests upon two major things. The government's mandate that it is legal tender for all debts, both public and private, and the public slash world's confidence in it as a medium of exchange. If that confidence were to disappear, so would its value. So its value is directly based upon its its, uh, confidence, the acceptance of the public as a medium of exchange and a store of value. You see what happens in countries like Venezuela. It's still a medium of exchange there. Their local um, peso, whatever they're using, real, I don't remember.